A little while ago I talked about how I would change some of the gameplay mechanics in The Division to make this game more of a cover based shooter instead of the dodge roll fest that you see right now in the dark zone. That video was part 1 of a 2 part series which I'm calling How I Would Fix The Division. Now this video is the second and the final part and I will be talking about the changes that I would make to the loot. Of course, I do recommend that you watch part 1 before this, however, it is not a necessity to understand anything in this video, as the gameplay and the loot, although they are connected, they are two very different things. Now, with the 1.2 patch that is coming out very soon, the loot drops will increase both in quality and in quality, so one could assume that the complaints that a lot of people have right now about the game not being rewarding enough, you know, you would think that those will go away. However, I do not necessarily believe that just upping the drop rates on everything is the real solution for the problem. That is because I don't really believe that the low drop rates are the real problem to begin with. I believe that this game is currently lacking a bit in some areas uh, when it comes down to how the loot itself can be used to build a character. Items in this game, especially the gear, have so many different stats with so many different variables that it is very difficult and I would say close to impossible to specialize your character in just one particular way. Um, when you for example attempt to build uh, your character around the ballistic shield for a tank player or the healing station for a support player, you know, just to name a few examples. Well, that is something that almost cannot be achieved, uh, and by the time that you're halfway finished with uh, getting the right skill attributes on gear, getting the right main stats and the right mods, well, you know, a new patch will have dropped already that will have introduced new powerful gear that will make the current stuff obsolete. And then, everybody can start again from the beginning. It's basically an endless fight against the RNG system. Now, don't get me wrong, more loot drops will ease out this whole process a little bit because players will get to roll the dice more often, but that still doesn't make the experience of character building anything better. At the end of the day, you will still need to get that god rolled item that so happens to shoot your build, and instead of it taking 500 hours to get it, it may take you only 100 hours. Hey, hooray! Um, but when you're building a character around just one specific thing, or when you're trying out a new build, it means that you have to commit to it. You cannot play around and test roll, so to speak, because, you know, you can never really complete a build, and that is something that I would like to see changed. Now, what I want you to know is that there are many, many easy solutions to this. One could say that the developers should just give us a lot more freedom when it comes down to the recalibration station. But I don't think that most of those solutions are good for the game. For example, with more freedom on the recalibration station, people would just settle with one good base item and then farm as many credits as they can and roll it over and over and over again. It wouldn't make the loot drops more exciting, it would just, you know, turn this game into a credit farming simulator and instead of, you know, rolling the dice at the crafting station with crafting materials, you are rolling the dice at the recalibration station with credits. Now, what I believe needs to happen is an item rework to where most of the items get a big decrease in the amount of statistics that they have. Think about it for just a second. How many times have you gotten a backpack or some gloves where every roll ended up fitting your belt? I don't think a lot of people have had that just once. But now I'm gonna ask you the same question, but instead of a backpack or some gloves, I'm going to ask you about the weapon mods. How many times have you gotten a weapon mod where the rolls on it ended up being what you wanted. For me personally, the weapon mods that I found or crafted have been a lot more useful than anything else in the game. And there is a reason for that, and that is that there are only two variables. They have less statistics. I actually think that weapon mods are in a very good place right now, because most of them come with one fixed statistic. For example, these blueprints right here, they always roll with an increased magazine size, uh, improved stability, more accuracy, a higher reload speed, or maybe more headshot damage. And then the second statistic, that is completely random. Now, depending on the weapon that you have, you're obviously going to want different things. With shotguns and SMGs, you probably want more optimal range or more critical hit damage, and with snipers, you are going to want more headshot damage. Assault rifles, of course, favor more stability. Uh, and LMGs, maybe you want a faster reload speed. My point is, with these mods, you can slowly build and improve your current weapon bit by bit. And when you finally find the perfect match for your particular weapon, well, that is a rewarding experience. And this is very different from how gear items work, as, you know, the gear items, they give you all the statistics at once. And you're just going to have to get lucky enough for a good roll. 
Now, what I want to do is I want to take how the weapons and the weapon mods work and uh, bring it over to the gear in this game. This is going to require us to make a, a few changes to, you know, all the gear items. Firstly, we of course have to remove a lot of the statistics on the gear itself and replace them with more mod slots, just like on the weapons. Currently, the stats on gear are always divided into three categories. We have major attributes, minor attributes, and skill attributes. What I would suggest to not change up the way that the items work too much is to leave all the minor attributes as they are, uh, usually they aren't that important anyway, and they will not get in the way of you building your character. But I would change all the major attributes on every gear piece into a mod slot, and then change all the skill attributes into mod slots specifically made for performance mods. This will leave, for example, every piece of body armor with 4 mod slots by default, 3 for the main stat gear mods, and 1 for performance mods. And, for example, if we look at the backpack, that will also have 4 mod slots, uh, but this will have two for the main stats and two for the performance mods. This change, it will do two things for the gear. Firstly, you will be getting, as I said, less rolls per gear item, which increases the chances by a lot on whether you are getting an item that you want or not, whether you're getting a good roll. The second thing that this change will do is give the player a lot more freedom in the way that he wants to build his character. Now, I do not think that it's going to be that easy to just, you know, change the game and make it a better experience because um, I do believe that the gear mods as well will need some uh, adjustments for this to work correctly. Uh, gear mods, in their current state, roll major attributes just like uh, the gear items, but they always roll them in much smaller amounts. So things such as armor or exotic damage for zillions, those are going to be a lot harder to increase. And with so many gear mods, I would assume that the main stats, such as uh, firearms, stamina and electronics, those will be a lot higher. So what I can see happening is that players will, for example, not be able to max out the armor anymore, but instead they will be sitting on a lot more electronics, stamina or firearms than the game was designed for. This change brings up some uh, imbalances. Now, I do have a solution for this problem, however, one that doesn't require to restrict the players in any way, and that is that the gear mods should have the option to roll two major stats instead of just one main stat and one major. This way, it is still possible for the players to get a close to the exact same stat rolls for about every statistic. The only difference is, is that you now have a lot more control, and if you would want to run with an absurdly high main stat, well that is possible, but it will be at the cost of everything else. There is one last problem with this however, and that is that not all the gear items in the game can roll the same major and skill attributes. For example, the gloves can roll things such as the shotgun damage and critical hit chance and LMG damage, and the body armor, that thing can roll things such as health and protection from elites, but they cannot roll those things vice versa. This is probably done so that players who play enough and get a lot of items will not be able to just stack too much of one statistics and become too powerful in just one area. If we would apply my changes to the game and every gear item would have a lot more mod slots, uh, then players would be able to push that one statistic completely and the game might run into a lot of balance issues. And the way I would go about making sure that this doesn't happen is to simply copy what has been done to the weapons and the weapon mods in this game and then apply it to the gear and the gear mods. Because remember how a lot of the weapons have a, a small or a large muzzle or a small and a large optics rail or, you know, a small and a large grip? Those are there so that only some mods fits on some weapons. Um, I'm not sure if this has been done to make uh, the game more realistic or to just add some balance to the game so that specific mods cannot be put on specific weapons. But what I am pretty sure of is that we can do the exact same thing for gear and gear mods for the sheer purpose of balance. Just divide the gear mods into small mods and large mods and give the small mods of course different possibilities for what they can roll and what not. Maybe things such as main stats or armor can only roll on the large mods and then things such as the SMG damage or the critical hit damage, those can only roll on the small mods. And once you've established which bonuses can roll on which mods, all you have to do is go over each item type and decide how many small and large mods they actually have. On the gloves, for example, you can go with three small mods and on the body armor you can go with three large ones. And then on the knee pads, you may want to go with one of each. At the end of the day, this does restrict players a little bit in terms of how they can build their character, but it keeps things in balance the way that the developers intended it to. And we will still have way, way more freedom than that we have right now in terms of character building, where we basically rely on the RNG too much to get a good role. 
But let's not get too ahead of ourselves because what would probably be the biggest challenge is actually implementing this change. You see, making some small balance adjustments is quite easy. You just change some of the values of X talent or Y stat roll uh, and you replace it with something else, just like they did with the Midas back a while ago. But in this case, we're not just doing that. We are actually taking away a lot of the stats on gear and we're not giving anything but the empty mod slots in return. That's a good way to piss off the people who have been working so hard to get their god rolls and completely make all their work irrelevant. So that's definitely not the way to implement it. We definitely cannot just change it from one day to the other. As I said in part one of this series multiple times already, I'm not a game developer, but if I were to think of one good way to implement this change, it would be to drop it together with a major DLC release where the power level of the players will increase through higher gear score items. Just make it so that everybody keeps all of their existing items, take nothing away, but every item that drops from now on, from that day on, from the release of the DLC, those items will have the newer rules to them with, uh, you know, the empty mod slots instead of the predetermined major and skill attributes. We can, in fact, have the pre-patch and the post-patch items exist at the same time without there being any issues. And after enough time, the pre-patch items will thin out uh, because the players will be receiving new and better gear and, you know, players will start replacing their older stuff. The newer gear mod system will also not be an issue because you might think that players will be able to drop some of the pre-patch mods on the post-patch gear uh, and vice versa for some unwanted power spikes uh, in, in this or that area. But we've already established that the post-patch items will have small and large mods. And because the pre-patch items, you know, they do not have this, players will only be able to place pre-patch mods in pre-patch gear items. And the same goes for everything post-patch. Then, let's say, maybe fast forward six months, uh, when everybody has had a fair chance to replace every single piece of gear, then you can make the 100% turn and change all the pre-patch items into post-patch items. The only players that will really be affected by this uh, are the ones that literally haven't played for the last six months or are the ones that purposely kept some of those uh, pre-patch items because, well, for some reason they wanted to. You know, there are always those people who get collective about older items when they know that they can never get it again. I believe that these changes to the loot, together with the changes that I would like to see done to the gameplay, which of course I talked about in part one, will turn the Division into a more enjoyable experience. But of course, at the end of the day, that is completely opinion-based. Again, I am not a game developer, and if you disagree with me or have anything to add, let me know and let me know why. The only thing I want to do with this is improve the game, and these are the best solutions that I could come up with. Of course, I will see you all later, or, you know, like they say in the Netherlands, see you later.